The doctor just came back in and said that they are gonna be doing the procedure uh, in about an hour and a half. So she's gonna be uh, given two antibiotics before the surgery. She's gonna be given gas, anesthesia, and then with the most mind-blowing part, they said they're gonna have to paralyze her, um, which is pretty scary. Unfortunately, guys, we are sitting in the parking lot of the emergency room. Uh, we've been here for about an hour and a half, two hours already, and Katie is really struggling. So a little bit of the backstory. Today is our two year anniversary and we were on a two night getaway in New York and Katie has been struggling with kidney stones for about eight months now. And we ended up in the hospital back in the end of May with a similar situation and ran through tests, followed up with our own uh, doctor and we honestly thought it was in the clear because she was not having issues so we thought she passed them on her own well tonight we we're out to dinner and she started to get extreme pain in her lower left back which is exactly where she used to get it and so we knew pretty quickly that her kidney stones were still there and that they were acting up and so she went to the car I paid the bill we wrapped up the food early and she wanted to go get a hot shower to try to relax and soothe the pain well, pretty quickly, we realized that was not gonna happen because she started throwing up, uh, borderline passing out in the car, could not sit still, shaking like crazy. So we found this hospital. Thankfully, there was like no wait for the emergency room, which was a huge blessing. They got her back in there. They just administered the pain meds that took like probably an hour. So she was in there passing out, um, which was awful. Like I've never seen Katie in so much pain. It makes me so sad. Um, so pray for her. I know you're not seeing this in real time, but really I'm praying that we can get this figured out and hopefully removed or however the process will go and work. Um, so she's in there right now. She's relaxing. They're doing an ultrasound on her. So I ran out to plug her phone in, uh, because all we have is a car charger and I'm not sure how long we're going to be here. So I'm going to plug hers in, take mine back in there. There's not much else going on right now. It's basically just a waiting game, but I wanted to give you guys a little update before heading back inside. Our biggest prayer is that at this point they can just operate on them or give her something for them to pass. Um, because at this point it's just unbearable for her. She's in there like begging them to do anything and everything they possibly can. And for those of you who have had kidney stones can relate, I'm sure. I've never even dealt with it, so I don't know what she's going through. That's it for now, and uh, we'll be sure to update you when we know more. Whatever they gave me, it worked. I just did an ultrasound, and it took like 30 minutes. And then now I'm laying down and feeling really sleepy, but I feel so much better than I did. I literally like could not breathe without it hurting. It was the weirdest thing. It was like no relief, never ending pain. If I moved, if I breathed anything, it just felt like a knife was just like cutting my insides out. But so you feel better now? Yeah. Good. I feel better now. Now I can feel it where it's at, but it doesn't hurt like They loaded you up with like so much painkillers. The guy three. told me he double dosed you or something. I, I said, you know this girl's petite, right? Like don't, I don't hurt her. I could not stop shaking. Like my body, uncontrollable, was like making me like pass out. You kept out passing almost. out on me. To try and prevent this happening again, we basically begged the doctor that if there was any way possible for them to remove it tonight, please do it. And so he said he would need prior documentation that this was an issue before. And so we actually gave them the records from our previous visit, showing it there. So he's gonna go talk to the urologist here and see if they will remove it tonight. So we are praying that that is what happens, but Katie's cracking me up because when I walked out of this room, she was shaking in pain, throwing up. And when I came back in, she's all laughing and giddy. So I'm happy that she's happy. I don't know what taking it out technically entails. So maybe I don't want it out, but I don't want to come back in pain. Happy anniversary to you. Ooh. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. <laughs> And sickness and health has been brought to a whole new level two years later. <laughs> I honestly think this is and worse than labor pains for you. Yes, because my labor pains, like even like going as far as I did, I wasn't in like this much pain. You had I the had pain it. meds. Yes, and I had an epidural. I don't 
understand the line. Like, this was terrible. Happy two years, babe. Happy two years. I love you. And I just threw up. Don't kiss me. She said she just threw up. Don't kiss me. I smell so bad. I just threw up like five times. Okay, we are not at the hospital. We ended up getting sent home. Katie is alive. She's uh, I'm so frustrated. I feel terrible. My body is like so out of whack right now. It's just so frustrating because I feel like I go in, I'm in like crazy amounts of pain. I beg them for help, and there's always some reason why they can't fix it, but then they tell me how it really needs to be fixed and it's dangerous to stay in there. So, yeah. this place, it's not their fault. They're, it's a small hospital, so the urologist wasn't there, but it's just frustrating because now I'm back where we were. We're going back to New Jersey and waiting, which I've already waited like nine months. Yeah. So it's frustrating. I actually called her New Jersey doctor already this morning and pushed really hard to get her in ASAP so we can figure this out. And so they are supposed to get back with me. Hopefully they will get her in this week. I don't really know what ASAP means for them. I know people are busy and it's a crazy time of year. So we are praying for Katie's sake that they will get her in pretty quickly and do the procedure and get it zapped or removed or however they do that. I don't think I can do another ER visit. Like this is the worst yeah. I've ever felt. And like today, I can barely sit up without like, like I am so dizzy. I feel so weak and so sick. I don't know if it's just because like, I was so like sick in the hospital. I don't know if it's cause I had like so much medicine. But like I legitimately am like on my edge of like so frustrated and like the reason this. they are not doing it in hospital or even transferring her to a place that can do it is because they say her kidney function is okay. So therefore it's not classified as an emergency. But then they also tell me if we leave it in here, it's gonna right. mess up your kidneys and you're gonna have bad kidney function. But since it's not right now and your kidney function's yeah. okay, you're not technically emergency. For now we're gonna go home. We got a four hour drive. I'm ready to go see Haley. And we're, we're gonna go so see much. Haley. And then hopefully we'll get some good news on the way home about an appointment and get this taken care of. But we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys, a lot of stuff has happened since the last time we talked. Uh, we left New York and began to drive home towards New Jersey. It was about a four hour drive. And Katie really started to feel bad again. Uh, she was vomiting, was very nauseous, dizzy, and dehydrated. So. We ended up actually driving straight to our hospital in New Jersey. And um, we have been in there for about six hours at this point. And uh, they decided to keep her overnight. Um, it is very crowded in there. So we are currently sharing a room with four other patients. And they said they may be able to get us in a different room at some point. But for now we're in there, we're good. She is on pain meds again and is doing okay. They did decide to do the CAT scan, which again showed that she had the kidney stones, which we of course knew at this point, um, but I think that it's just protocol. And then a positive thing is that this hospital is connected with her urologist and doctor. So they have all her records on file already, which just proves to them that this has been an ongoing thing and not just like a one time, first time situation. So for all those reasons, the doctors wanted Katie to stay overnight. And they said we will see the urologist tomorrow morning and that they will either do the surgery. Um, I don't remember the exact name. I guess it's considered a surgery. Um, but the procedure in normal terms, they say like blasting it out. So you may be familiar with that if you've dealt with kidney stones or know someone who has. So if they don't choose to do it in the hospital tomorrow morning, they did say that they would schedule an appointment right there and it would be for a very soon follow up date. Um, so we decided to stay overnight just because we're already here. We've been in this far. She's in pain. So she at least got relief again and we will have an answer regardless this time tomorrow. The only negative part in all of this is that we have not seen Haley in two days. And so mom was really looking forward to getting back uh, and seeing her tonight, but that's going to have to get postponed to tomorrow morning. Uh, my parents are taking really great care of her, sending us videos, pictures, FaceTimes all the time. So uh, Katie is in good spirits right now. Uh, we got dinner. It was the first time she had ate in like 30 hours or 35 hours. So I think that was uh, contributing to her nausea, dizziness, and uh, kind of that feeling like dehydrated. So she's going to try and get some sleep. We may get moved to a room and, you know, sooner or later, we're going to see the urologist and get this taken care of.
to see you. I miss you so much. Are you being a good girl for Gigi? Mommy's never leaving you again. It's been too long. The urologist just came back and told us a game plan for what they're gonna do. Yeah, initially, they kind of were giving the impression that they were gonna send us home again. Which so, was super yeah, depressing that's, and frustrating because I feel like I keep doing this, but. Um, after talking with a few of them, they decided to keep her again overnight and they are going to put a stent in tomorrow late in the day, they said. Um, because of the size of the stone and the size of Katie, they said after looking at the CAT scan that her tubes are really small because no she's petite. Gonna pass. So they can't, um, it's not gonna pass on its own. And that for whatever reason, they don't wanna go in and try to get the stone, which is what the words he used. Um, so they're gonna put, so they're gonna a, put stent a stent in, in. And then wait two weeks and then they're gonna get the stone and then they're gonna take the stent out after. So it's like a whole process. Hopefully we're making sense on the info we've been given. So basically tomorrow she's getting a stent that will open up her tubes that hopefully will allow the stone to pass or allow them into to her be bladder. Able to get it to yeah. the next appointment. He said there's a very slim possibility they can do it all tomorrow, but he said he doesn't think it's gonna happen. Um, and because the kidney stone has been there so long, it's like blocking stuff from passing through, which can cause infection and all of that stuff. Yeah. So he we're said that get it out. her left kidney looks more unhealthy than the right. He said he it's showed really us. swollen and like yeah. you shouldn't see that stuff on a CAT scan because I guess it's been there so long. So I'm just happy that someone's gonna like take care of it and take it out and I can <clears> stop <throat> like going back and forth. Like we stopped updating you guys, but like every few weeks and stuff, like I'm going back and forth having the pain again and it's like been a whole long process. Yeah. So I'm just happy there's like a finish line in sight. And not only and I can get this done did we get this news today he basically told katie that this is probably going to be an ongoing issue um yeah. which is awful because he said she's so young to get him he said sometimes pregnancy can start yeah, like, we're praying it's a one-off thing stones. um but they're going to test the stones and then give her some dietary suggestions to prevent future stones um but as far as recovery and things like that he said some people cry in pain every day from the stent and some people they can go skiing so uh we are actively praying that it'll be an easy two week um two week recovery with the stent i'm actually gonna go <sighs> meet up with Haley. i haven't got to see her this is the longest i've ever been apart from her yeah. and i literally was stressing out leaving her for us to go away for two days on our anniversary because i didn't want to leave her and now it's like i've been in the hospital now I'm staying again in the hospital. This is your third night? I miss her so much. I literally am like dying to see her. Thankfully, she's in good hands yeah. and Gigi's been keeping her and been doing such a good job with her. But for me, I'm like, I'm yeah. dying over here. Change of plans. Uh, the doctor just came back in and said that they are going to be doing the procedure uh, in about an hour and a half. So. I'm really nervous, actually. Katie laughs when she gets nervous. And the I doctor know. was in here. I was here. laughing the whole time he was in here because he was telling me all of the things that he's gonna do and it scared me it a little bit. It makes me pretty like, wild. really uncomfortable. Um, so we had mentioned the stent and so he actually told us they're gonna try and get the stent in and get the stones out. But he's 90% sure that that won't happen and we'll have to come back. Um, but because there is a 10% chance they can, they have to do a lot more, uh, I guess, things prep for work. protocol and prep. So she's going to be uh, given two antibiotics before the surgery. She's going to be giving gas, anesthesia, and then with the most mind-blowing part, they said they're going to have to paralyze her, um, which is pretty scary. Um, they said basically because it is such a small like thing that they're going, the, t the ureter or tube or whatever is so small that they can't have a chance of me moving at all. Yeah. So they're going to intubate me, paralyze me, give me sleeping. <laughs> Katie just won't stop laughing. And to be honest, she doesn't have enough time to and get nervous. he so. held up this, he said, and I'm going to put a wire about this long through your right something, and then I'm going to take it through your left something. And I was literally like, I'm so sorry, but like, yeah. I, I trust that he is good and he's going to know what to do, what he needs to do. He explained it really well, really kind. So I just said, look, 
just whatever's safe, that's what I'll go with, yeah. the safest route. But I honestly wish I didn't know what they're doing to me because now I'm just like really nervous. I'm trying to tell Katie like, these guys do it every day, all day for a living. So yes, it's super scary for us because like you trust them day, to do it, but, but when it's, it's you me, yeah. under the table or under the light, whatever they say, it's different. But I'm not going to get Haley, and um, I'm gonna hang I'm gonna up here nervous, with Katie. But if I don't like laugh about like being nervous, like I will literally start getting yeah. like really bad anxiety. So I'm trying to just like. Anytime someone goes fine. under, it's I'm trying to get distracted. Serious, so. Like I'm just trying to get distracted, so that's why I'm calling everybody. All that being said, um, I'm probably gonna wrap up this video just because I'm gonna spend time with Katie, um, make sure she's good, gets out of surgery okay. Um, there's just been so much that has happened in the last 36 hours. Um, I'm hoping I can even compile a video that makes sense for the first part of this. <laughs> well, it's just so hard because every five minutes they're telling us something different. Yeah. Today they've come in and told me not to eat and to eat three different times. Yeah, so. And I ended up not eating, which is good because now they can do it. So all prayers are appreciated. We'll talk more in the, the next part about recovery. Uh, there's already been some stuff about she can't lift anything over 10 pounds for four weeks, which obviously with a baby, that's 20 pounds. That's gonna be uh, tough and an adjustment, but we'll get through it and uh, everything hopefully will be okay. Praying everything will go okay. Um, but yeah, we're gonna sign off for now. And uh, we'll come back to you in a couple days with another update. Kidney stone free. Kidney stone free.